This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. This is accessible through our online course modules that can be accessed at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash CME-courses, or simply by clicking on the link in our show notes and creating an account. All right. So um, I was going to talk about a little tracheostomy issue that can come up in the emergency department. So uh, we see a lot of patients who have tracheostomies, and usually it's uh, pretty straightforward, just part of their kind of care. But you can have some complications, obviously, of tracheostomies. Two of the complications I wasn't going to talk about right now can either be obstructions, which could be bad, uh, tracheostomy tube dislodgements. And the one I was going to talk about is bleeding from a trach or a tracheostomy. So, you know, it's something that can happen. And the most concerning and most uh, feared complication or cause of bleeding, and the one we need to really worry about, is a fistula between the tracheostomy and what's called your innominate artery. The innominate artery is one of the major branches of the aorta, and it sits very close to where tracheostomies are, and you can get a fistula. And if you think about a connection between your aorta and a tracheostomy tube, that's obviously not a good thing. So this most commonly presents in the first several weeks, like in the first couple of weeks up to a month after a tracheostomy has been placed, but not always. And it can present with just a very minor bleeding, like a, a small amount of bleeding, hemoptysis, blood at the trach. It can present with a pretty large amount of bleeding that then stops spontaneously called a sentinel bleed or like a warning bleed. And what we need to think about or be aware of is that even if someone has had a small amount of bleeding that has stopped from a tracheostomy, we need to be concerned about this tracheoanominate fistula until proven otherwise. So if someone comes in and they've had the bleeding and it stopped, We should be happy that it has stopped, but not be completely relieved. So sometimes we'll do uh, some testing, like a CT angiogram to see if that's what's going on. We'll call someone like ENT and they'll visualize it. But what to do if someone comes in and they're still bleeding? So the first thing to do is if they have a cuffed trach tube is to overinflate the balloon. Tracheostomy balloons can actually take up to 50 mLs of air if you kind of put it in slowly. And if you overinflate the balloon where the trach sits, it can tamponade or put pressure on the bleeding and that can stop it. So that's kind of our first attempt. If somebody for some reason has an uncuffed trach, then you obviously can't blow up a balloon. We could switch it out for a cuffed tube and then do it or an endotracheal tube. And that brings up another point is that if somebody has a recently placed tracheostomy, like less than seven days, they say, you shouldn't just blindly replace it because you can put a false track in and then it can be just in the subcutaneous tissue and that can be a real mess in of itself. So if it's been less than seven days, then you either need to replace it over a bougie or with a uh, bronchoscope. So those are kind of the first steps to uh, get the bleeding to stop. If the bleeding continues, then we do other resuscitation things like initiating mass transfusion protocol, IV access, calling for lots of help. And then the heroic kind of last measure, if you can't stop it with the balloon, is actually to take out the tracheostomy and put a finger in the tracheostomy stoma and compress the artery behind the sternum. So if you could imagine someone's got a tracheostomy stoma, this trach is out, you can put your finger inside of it and push up towards the front of their sternum and you're trying to compress the artery between your finger and the sternum. And you can stop the bleeding that way. And if you're lucky enough to stop the bleeding that way, you get to go to the operating room with your finger on that artery until that person can kind of get the bleeding controlled. So, you know, these don't happen a lot. They're pretty rare, but they can happen. And the big thing is for us to be ready to take care of them if they come in bleeding. And then also to be aware that A little bit of bleeding from a recent placed tracheostomy isn't something to kind of blow off if the bleeding has stopped. So whether it's an EMS complaint or someone coming in from triage, something to take very seriously until kind of fully evaluated. Questions, comments? Thanks, guys. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.